Okay, welcome to another edition of Insurance Role Playing, where we're going to talk about um, what to say when you're calling people to send out a quote. Then we'll move on to uh, what to say when you do the follow up. Um, for those that are watching this video, be sure and subscribe. I think it's right here um, so that you can catch future videos that I'm going to be putting out. So here's what I want to do. Since Gene has joined us and Alan, uh, you're the victim for today. Um, Alan, what I want you to do is I want you to call Gene and you're going to uh, get information from him so that you can send out a life insurance quote. Okay. All right. Gene, turn on your microphone. Okay, here we go. Hello, Gene. This is Alan. Did I catch you at a bad time? Hi, Alan. No, it's a great time to talk. Great. I'm the state representative for the National Coalition for Self-Employed, and I was calling to see if I could email you a quote on your life insurance. Uh, yeah, I have life insurance, but if you'd like to send a quote over, that'd be fine. Exactly. Most people do have life insurance. Gene, I appreciate that. Is your best email still gene at joeschmo.com? That's, that's exactly it. All right, Gene, what's your age? 60. 60. And are you currently covered and for how much? Uh, yeah, I'm covered. I've got uh, a policy. It's a term policy for 100000 All right. And do you smoke? No. Do you have any medical conditions or take any prescriptions we need to consider? Uh, high blood pressure. All right. And what do you take for that? Uh, metropolol. All right. Okay, great. And once again, my name's Alan Crookshank. Gene, it was nice chatting with you, and I'll be emailing you your quotes today. Enjoy the rest of your day, my friend. Okay, thanks, Alan. Take care. You too. Okay. Uh, Gene, uh, Gene, how did you feel about that call since you were the victim? Since you were the person that um, got called out of the blue, you had no idea he was going to call you. Well, uh, it was non-confrontational. It was no pressure. Uh, Alan's got a nice, pleasant, uh, friendly voice. I, you know, I would, uh, and it was quick. You know, it wasn't... Uh, a 15 minute presentation that was taking 15 minutes out of my day it was something fast and easy. Okay. Alan, how did you feel about the flow of what you did on the phone? I felt good about it. He didn't give me any resistance. I appreciate that, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> good thing you didn't call me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Alan, you did things, you know, on a scale of one to 10, I'd give you an eight on that one. You did things a little bit out of order than what I do. But as I've told many people, the one thing I do not want to happen is to have a bunch of Robert Russell robots out there. You need to do your own calling with your own personality and do what fits for you. The goal here is to get enough information to send out a quote and then get off the phone. And I think you accomplished that. So what I'd like to do with you, Alan, is uh, I'm going to call you. I'm the agent. You're the client. And I'm going to give you a different spin on it to see a different ways that you could make the same phone call. Okay. Uh, first of all, you're using National Coalition for Self-Employed. What state are you calling? Pennsylvania and... Um... Tennessee, and I, I also have the other realtor website. All right, let's well. go with Tennessee National Coalition. National Coalition. Okay. And what's, what's your occupation that you're calling? Right now, I'm calling realtors. Okay, perfect. I like realtors. That's who I call. Okay, ring, ring. Hello, this is Alan. Hey, Alan, Robert Russell, you got a minute? Yeah. Uh, Alan, I'm the broker for the National Coalition for Self-Employed. We specialize in insurance for realtors. Are you still a realtor? Yes, I am. Awesome. Uh, what I wanted to do is give you a quote on your life insurance. Who do you have your insurance with? 
I've got it with uh, Zurich. And how much are you paying? Oh, I can't remember. We got it probably 16 years ago, maybe uh, like 80 bucks a month. Okay. And how much coverage is that? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's about a half a million. Okay. And uh, how long have you had that policy? About 15 years or so. And when does it expire? You know, I'm not exactly sure. I, I think uh, probably about 15, 16 years or so. So 15 years from now? Yeah. Okay, so you got a 30 year term. Yes. Okay, um, and how old are you again? Uh, 50. And, how, and do you smoke? No. How tall are you? 5'8". How much do you weigh? 220. Are you taking any medications? Uh, take metropolo. What's that for? Blood pressure. And how many milligrams do you take a day? 0.25. And how long have you been taking the same dosage? About uh, eight years. Okay, good. Um, is your email address still Alan at alancrushank.com? Yeah, it is. Okay, I'm going to send you some quotes. You take a look at them. If you have any questions, give me a call. All righty, thanks. Bye-bye now. Now, Gene, since you overheard that, Tell mm -hmm. me what I did different than Alan on that phone call. Uh, you appeared to, you know, qualify him a little bit more, uh, find out exactly what he does, if he's still a realtor. Uh, talked about, um, you know, what insurance he did have, who it was with. I think you asked that. I'm sorry if I missed that. Yeah, he has it with Zurich, 15 year yeah, term, 500,000. And uh, I don't know, it was a very quick phone call, but uh, very effective. Did you notice the difference of what I did with the medication that he didn't do? Oh yeah, about the, the dosage and if he's been on that same dosage for uh, a number of years. Do you know why I did that? No, I don't. Because when a, person is take, that. when a person is taking high blood pressure medicine, which I take, um, one of the things the insurance company wants to know is, is it controlled? Is that high blood pressure controlled? Mm -hmm. And the first question they're gonna wanna know is how long have you been taking that medication and have you been taking the same dosage for at least a year? Now, if Alan would have said that he's taken uh, lisinopril, he's only been on it for six months, he just switched from something else um, a year ago, then I know that we got a problem. It's not controlled. He's probably going to be rated. Ah, I see. If I would have gone just on the information he asked you, then chances are that policy could be rated because I didn't get enough information. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, uh, your height and weight, Alan, how tall are you? 5'8". And how much do you weigh? 220. Do you think you'd qualify for a preferred status? Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the build. Some carriers, maybe? Probably not. Okay. I, I would say, based on the medication that you're taking and your height and weight, you're probably not going to qualify for preferred. So here's my rule of thumb, which is going to be crazy, but y'all just trust me on this one. When I'm talking to a person on the phone and I want to figure out whether they're a standard or preferred, because what I need to do is when I send this quote, I need to be as close to accurate as possible without getting a full underwriting questions. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to picture what Alan looks like in a bathing suit. That's not good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I didn't throw up when you told me how tall you are and how much you weigh. Um, if you are taking medication, high blood, high blood pressure especially, you probably are taking completely out of preferred and moving straight to standard. That's without the height and weight. I think the height and weight could be okay but I would still quote you standard when I sent out those quotes. Gotcha. 
So that's going to take some time to understand how to do that. But what you want to do is when you're getting this information, you want to try to quote it as close to what you think it's going to be as possible without turning this whole conversation into a bunch of health questions. Yeah. The goal is to ask is ask questions that you need so that you can get off the phone and send out 30 quotes today. Okay. Gotcha. Alan, okay. do you have any questions about the way I did it as opposed to the way you did it? No, I, I actually think that's a good idea with the dosage and that made, that made perfect sense. Do you ever, uh, that was just since you were touching on that, when you're sending out the quotes and you find out in this scenario that it's probably a standard, do you ever have where you might consider going with the non-med products for any reason? I was wondering about that when I was watching the videos. I do. Everything I quote is going to be full-blown medical. Okay. And I tell them before, you know, whenever I'm doing this app, and we'll do this on the follow-up call, I tell them this is probably your best case scenario that we're looking at. Worst case scenario is there's something that we find on the doctor's records because they're going to do what's called an APS. It stands for attending physician statement. They're going to request medical records from your doctor. If your doctor puts something stupid or crazy on your medical records, that's what the insurance company goes by. They really don't go by the questions that you answer. They go by the doctor's report. So your best case scenario is what I've told you today. Your worst case, they find out other information that you didn't know about that's on your medical records, and it could come, could come back higher. Mm. And I ask them, are you okay with that? Yes. Perfect. Do you ever get feed, feedback from them, the people that aren't interested in doing the medical? That Do you change how you approach it? Yes, I do. In fact, I had a guy who um, was in Colorado, and um, when I did the app, he, uh, you know, he qualified as a non-smoker. And he asked me, he said, um, now, what all do I have to do for this, for this app? I said, well, it's real simple. Um, Paramed is going to come out, take your height and weight, take some blood, do your blood pressure, and all that kind of stuff. It goes, he goes, okay, that's fine. So uh, Paramed calls me about three or four days later. They said, your client has declined the coverage. He doesn't want to go through with it. So I called him and I said, hey, dude, what's the deal? What happened? He said, you didn't tell me that I have to do a paramed. I said, yes, we talked about it. And he goes, well, I can't do a paramed. I said, why? He said, because you asked me if I smoke. I don't smoke, but I smoke. <laughs> I said, ah, you smoke. I said, simple. What we'll do is we'll move you into a um, uh, simplified issue. And uh, the two companies that I would recommend is um, Sagicor or SBLI Life. They'll do, a, they'll do up to 500000 with no paramed. I said, you do realize without a paramed, your rates are going to be higher. And you need to disclose that you smoke. He goes, I'm okay with that. So he did it. We just switched it with the underwriter, Swish Companies. They, um, they did the health questions over the phone. He disclosed what he does, and it was approved. Simplified issue. Nice. Okay. Um, Gene, you are not really a part of our system, but do you understand what we're doing here? Well, other than role playing, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I've been following you for, uh, oh, probably a month or so. And okay. All right. Be sure and watch all my videos on YouTube, selling life insurance over the phone. There's 37 videos, make some popcorn, and whatever you do, don't start at 11 o'clock at night because you'll miss most of it. <laughs> I'll be asleep. <laughs> I have people that call me and say, I watched those videos and I was up till 3.30 in the morning because I had to watch the next one. Don't start late. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move to the follow-up. So let's talk about technicalities first. Um, when you make 
calls, you're going to have a schedule that you need to keep. And um, this schedule, I would tell you to write this down. This has been on my videos. Um, here's how your schedule works. You're going to get to your desk at 8 o'clock in the morning. You're going to check your emails from 8 to 9. At 9 o'clock, you're going to start your, what I call, immediate follow-ups. At 10 o'clock, you're going to start making phone calls to send out quotes, like what we just did. At 4 o'clock, you're going to stop the quoting calls, and you're going to continue where you left off with your 9 to 10 follow-up calls. Follow-up calls are from 9 to 10, and then 4 to 5. At 5.01, you turn your phone off and leave your office and don't make another phone call after five o'clock. Even if they tell you, I can't talk to you now, can you call me back after six? What I do is I tell them I would love to, but my office closes at five o'clock. And this is my office, it's at home. And what I do is I walk out that door and I close the door and I forget about what happened that day. So the calls that we made today, I called Alan. Uh, he gave me information. I sent him a quote. Alan is going to be on my list of calls that I'm going to make from 9 to 10 tomorrow morning. And I call those immediate follow-ups. Those are people that I sent out a quote today. They get called first on the immediate follow-ups. Then after I've finished all the immediate follow-ups, then I move into the routine follow-ups. The routine follow-ups are people that didn't buy and they are thinking about it. They want to look, they want to talk to their dumb brother, sister's cousin. And that's when you do your routine follow-ups. Alan, does that make sense? Perfectly. Okay, groovy. Next, we're going to move to the follow-up calls. Alan, I'm going to pick on you again since I took the information from you. Um, you've got the 15-year term, 500000 I sent you a standard rate. Are you ready? Ring, ring. Hello, this is Alan. Alan, Robert Russell, do you remember me? Uh, your name sounds familiar. I'm the guy that sent you the life insurance quotes yesterday. Oh, yeah. How you doing? Groovy. Hey, I sent you those quotes. Did you get a chance to look at them? I, I opened it up, but I didn't really get to it yet, to be honest. Okay, that's okay. Um, let me tell you what I sent you. I sent you three different types of quotes. I sent you a 10-year term, a 20-year term, and a 30-year term. What you've got right now, even though you told me you have a 30-year term and you've been paying on it 15 years, you actually now, as of today, only have 15 years left. So when we compare a 10-year, 20-year, and 30-year term, we're comparing the 20 and 30 against the 15 that you have now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So the one I think you should consider, based on your age, because you're 50, I think you ought to look at the 20-year term because it's cheaper than what you're paying, and it gives you coverage for five years longer as opposed to what you have now. In five years, of that extra five years, you'll be 70. So the question I have for you is, do you think you're going to need 500000 when you're 70 years old? Probably not. Okay. Then what I would recommend is to go with the 20-year term. It's cheaper than what you're paying, and um, it's real simple to do. Do you have any questions? Uh, what do we have to do to do it? What's the next step? Um, well, guess how long it takes to do this application over the phone? Probably an hour, I guess. Oh, no. Seven minutes. Oh. Do you have seven uh, minutes right now? Yeah, I, I do. Okay. Who do you want your beneficiary to be? My wife. And what's her full name? Uh, May Crookshank. Okay. All right. So let's stop right here. So, Alan, that's exactly what I say to people when I get them on the phone to do the follow-up. Do you have any questions on the flow that I did with the follow-up? Not on the flow. Um, yeah, I do actually. 
when you say it's cheaper, I'm, I am 15 years older than when I bought it. So are, are you saying it's normally, do you find, I mean, it's kind of hard to outprice something that they bought 15 years ago, isn't it? Most You'd of the time? be surprised. You'd be surprised. It is probably going to be cheaper. Okay. I mean, when you look at the rates, when you're comparing 150 companies, this thing is going to put these things in order of cheapest to highest. It's probably not guaranteed, probably going to be cheaper than what they have now. Gotcha. And one other question on that. Um, do you, how do you, I have actually written down a few questions. Um, so on that same exact scenario you just did, how do you set them up for what to do? Cause you're doing, you know, you're doing the short app on the phone. How do you, tell let them know can you cover that real quick maybe role play how you let me know who's calling me yeah and what yeah yeah all right so alan we've got everything filled out um let me tell you what happens next in about 24 hours you're going to get a phone call from the insurance company they're going to ask you the health questions over the phone that's what's going to take a little bit longer from there then based on your answers they're going to send a request for medical records from your doctor They'll also set up a time for a paramed to come to your house uh, or wherever you want it, and you determine when you want to meet them. That takes about 15 minutes to do blood, pee in a bottle, answer health questions from the paramed. After that, it's going to go to the insurance company. Um, once you get approved, that's when we're going to collect the first month's premium. I don't do any money up front. I want to wait till we make sure that you know exactly how much is going to be before I collect any money. Are you okay with the money part? Yeah. Okay, good. Most people are. Um, and then once we collect the money, then the policy is going to be mailed directly to you and you're covered from that time on. Got now do they always call? Do you let them know they're now the, they're going to be calling you like the next day? Is that almost a guarantee that they'll be calling the day after your call? It's usually 24 to 48 hours. Okay. And what will happen is your case manager will send you a message that they tried to call you. You didn't answer the phone. Then I'm going to send you a text and I'm going to say, Joe Blow from um, Protective Life is trying to call you. This is the number they're calling from, or you can call this 1-800 number extension, whatever, give me your social security number and you can go ahead and do the call whenever you want. Robert, I, I did write down some questions. Do you think it, it, I should wait or do you want me to ask on this recorded call some of the more technical stuff? I didn't know what you want to uh, Go ask. ahead. If, if, uh, if I can't answer those questions on a recorded call, then mean you can talk on the phone. Okay. Um, the first one, I just wanted to know when you're going to send them out a quote, and like I was going through the different companies that were quoted, some of them don't have drop tickets. Okay. Do you, re, do you remove those before you send the quote? I do drop tickets only. So you remove the ones that don't have drop tickets. That's what I was thinking would make now, sense. Now, hold on. Let's, let, let me paraphrase that. Um, I had a guy who wanted, who had 500,000 that I sold him last year. He called me, he wanted to upgrade his policy to 3 million. The company that came out cheaper did a full-blown app, but we could do an e-app over the phone. That took me about 45 minutes. On something like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them. Now, you realize this is going to take at least 30 to 45 minutes to do over the phone. He goes, okay, I'm okay with that. He go, And I said, um, so what we did is we did a Zoom meeting, and I did a share screen so that he could see the application while we did it on the phone. And I was going through the questions and he was going, no. I said, whoa, I didn't ask her. He goes, well, hurry up. You're taking too long. <laughs> <laughs> he was reading ahead of me because he could see the app. I said, okay, rock on. I'm not even gonna ask you. I'm just gonna scroll. You tell me the answer. And uh, that made it go by a lot faster by doing that. Gotcha. And then so, I was yeah, if it's worth it, you know, if you're looking at, I mean, this is like um, $294 a month commission. I'm going to take an hour to do that. Okay. Gotcha. What about guaranteed issue? If you, you ask them those questions and you notice, man, this guy's kind of banged up. Would you just go right into maybe a guaranteed issue product? And how would you send quotes for that? Uh, we did do? the same thing. We have, um, 
through our quoting engine, you can send out guarantee issue quotes um, and just email them the quotes the same way. Okay, gotcha. So you kind of peruse the uh, the carrier's medical just to try to gauge if they're anywhere from standard to up to preferred the best you're you gonna, can. You're gonna find out real quick who does what. Um, like for example, protective life, they're pretty lenient on underwriting. Um, so you can get stuff issued pretty quick with them. Um, American General, if you have any health questions, it's gonna take a while. Prudential, if you apply today, you might get approved by the time you're 60. Yes. <laughs> do you just remove Prudential then or do you just- No, I quote them, no. they're slow. And I tell people up front, I'm gonna just tell you, Prudential's slow as hell. They're gotcha. moving at their own time and they're not gonna be rushed by you or me or anybody else. So I'll let them know it's gonna take some time. And it doesn't take, it really doesn't take that long. I'm just impatient because I've been dealing with protected for so long who just speeds through their applications. Prudential takes probably three to four months to get approved. God. I know. Okay, well that makes perfect sense then. I'll warn them. If I know something about the company, I'm gonna warn them. When you're, if, they, um, if they give me a company that I've never done business with, I'm going to tell them up front, well, this is who I've done business with. I know what their history is. I've never sold through this company, so I can't tell you what they're going to do. One other thing, Robert, I read uh, going through some of the information, like pro protective, um, is, it, is it true that they, if it's under a million dollars, even if you um, you were expecting to do a medical, that upon the person calling the case manager, they may actually waive the medical if they qualify for preferred. That's what True. someone told me from the broker. True that. So that's another selling feature if protective is good to work with. Yeah, you you know you could go with Prudential if you want, sir, but a lot of the cases they actually don't have to end up doing a paramed because they get preferred status. I'm not saying that will happen to you, but it could. Right. They like, um, you know, they, if they have five apps, they go, okay, this one doesn't have to get one. Okay. Good. Yeah. It, just random. It's just random selection. All righty. And if you were, if you're on the phone with someone and they're, they want to get it, but they're like, Hey, you know, a buddy of mine, he, he got his insurance. He didn't have to do a med. Do you have any of those products? Do you ever just go right to simplified issue? Oh, somebody? hell yeah. Yes. I'm not going to get beat out. And you do a drop ticket for simplified too? Yes. And here's okay. what, let me just tell you this. Um, I had a uh, PNC guy in Destin and he was, um, all he does is homeowners insurance and he'll have a hundred companies and he'll send out five quotes. And I said, dude, that's, that's kind of dumb. You have a hundred companies. Why don't you send out all the quotes? And he goes, because that's overwhelming to people. I said, well, I'll tell you what, if I go behind you, uh, I'm going to send out all the quotes to let them know that I'm not handpicking the quotes. And that's why when I send out quotes, I send out every company out there because I want them to get off the phone with me and know that I shop this thing and I send them everybody I got. If you're only sending out five quotes, my thought is, as a consumer, I wonder what number six looks like. What's he hiding from me? True. So I would recommend sending every company you got in that price range. Now, you, you mentioned several times 100, 150 like different companies, but when I keep running quotes, that's not what's showing up for me um, in different scenarios. I'm getting like maybe 50 or so. Is that pretty accurate? Here's, here's why. It's based on the age that you're selling. Um, somebody told me when I first started selling insurance, I was 23. And I asked my manager, his name was Mr. D. I said, Mr. D, how old do you think my clients are going to be? He said, typically what we've seen is that you're going to sell five years younger to five years older of your current age. And so at 23, I was selling people at 28 max. Those were my clients when I was 23. What's weird is that even though I can't see these people now and I'm 58, it's still true that I'm selling people five years younger, five years older. 
So it really depends on the age that you're quoting people. If you're selling people that are much younger, it's going to be a lot of quotes. If you're selling people that are around your age, 55, it's not going to be as many companies, especially on a 30 year term, 10 year term, maybe 20 year term, maybe 30, you might have 10. And what's your experience, Robert, on the transition to the case manager? Do you, um, do you run into situations where I'm sure that sometimes they're not able to get a hold of them and they, do they reach back to you and let you know, and, and you try to reestablish things or, you know, I've had case managers in the past with a different IMO. If you notice my later videos, I talked about, um, I switched to a different IMO and the problem was two problems. There was two problems that I had. And I'm, we're not even going to talk about this. I mean, we didn't even, you didn't even address it, but I'm just going to go ahead and mention it. The reason that I switched IMOs is because the one of the IMOs that I was with um, started getting leads and they started trying to sell leads to my people. I said, you don't understand my system. My system is I'm going to show you how to get your own leads so that you never have to buy leads. If you're pushing leads to my people, we're moving. And so they continued and 200 people left that IMO and we moved them to the IMO that we're with now. To answer the question on the case manager, this other IMO was not very good on follow-ups with their case managers. And so people would call, agents would call, try to get questions answered and it would take two or three days to get a reply. So the issue that we have now, the case manager, if you can't get them on the phone, if you email them, they're pretty good about emailing pretty quick. You need to understand what time zone they're in too. So um, like the uh, case manager that, uh, that we're with now, they're in South Florida, so they're on an Eastern time zone. Um, so just be aware if you send them an email, they don't, there's not 7-Eleven that you're dealing with. They don't work 24 hours a day. So just keep in mind that they close at five o'clock. Gotcha. Jane, any questions from you? No, I'm just pretty much taking it all in. Uh, actually, I liked what you said about collecting the initial payment because right now I'm doing it just the opposite and obviously I'm getting a lot of pushback. That's right. You know why? They don't trust you. That's right. They don't know me. So why not get the money later when you build trust? Because here's what's going to happen when they go through this process and they're doing the app over the phone and the, and the, um, the blood work and the APS and the case manager, by the time we're done and they know exactly how much it's going to be, that's when they're ready to cough up their banking information. And that's why my lapse rate, which has been zero for the last 20 years, hmm. I have zero lapse rate. Zero. I have a 100% persistency because I don't collect money at, with the application. I do it at the end. I do COD on everything. Now, and there's a spot for that, Russell, on the... Uh, Robert, it's Robert. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, there is. <laughs> sorry about that. Now, $3 million dude was going on a cruise. And I said, why are you getting $3 million? I said, is your wife fixing to knock you off? He goes, no, we're going on a cruise and I want to get coverage before we go. And uh, he, he said, will I be covered? I said, the only way to be covered is we have to do money up front. You got to... You got to do the first month's premium up front. He goes, I'm okay with that. So that was a rare case. And I told him, because now remember, this has been one of my clients for a while. So he already knew me and trusted me. So telling him that we had to do money up front because of the situation, he wanted to be covered today. But for the most part, Gene, I do not collect money up front. Yeah, I like that approach. Yeah. The other thing is I want you to understand both of y'all is that if you do it this way and you call and send out a quote and you don't try to sell them, you have given yourself credibility for not trying to push insurance on people. Mm -hmm. 
And now you're the expert because you're not hard sell, got to slam this down your throat. Because if you do, and that's why final expense people have such a hard time with lapses, they believe in calling, they believe in closing on the first appointment. I think that's a huge mistake. Collect the money at the end, not up front. Robert, one on, on that note, when you're doing the preliminary ticket, will the system, because I actually didn't try to, if you if you don't type in the banking information, will it let you move forward to where yep. the case? Okay. Yep. Perfect. What you need to do is do an app on yourself. Yeah, I did one. Uh -huh. And then don't submit. Or when you submit it, say this is a trial app. Don't process. Gotcha. Awesome. Okay. Any questions about sending out quotes? No. Alan? No, you covered it well. I'm good with that. Gene, any questions about sending out quotes? No, not at this time, but uh, I think I need to watch your 37 videos. <laughs> Get <laughs> Probably some popcorn. Learn a lot. <laughs> so Get I don't ask any stupid questions. Get your margarita and some popcorn and you're ready to roll. <laughs> All right, let's hey. go over. I want to go over some math with y'all before we end this call and people that are watching this video because I want to show you how effective and powerful it is to do 30 quotes a day. So let's pick on Gene. Gene, what do you think your average life premium would be per month? Average. Probably 80 or $90. Okay. And Alan, what do you think yours is? Yeah, I would, I was about to say around uh, 80 to a hundred because we're dealing with self-employed. Okay. Um, both of y'all said 80 to 90. Let's go even lower than that. Let's say it's 70. Okay. Y'all okay with that? You bet. So yeah. if you take 70 times 12, that's $840. You're going to be on a 90% contract. That's $756 per sale per year for the first year. Okay. If you send out 30 quotes a day and you only close 50% over, over a period of time, because you're not going to close these tomorrow. It ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. You're like a superstar if you close them tomorrow, but it just ain't going to happen. You send out 30 quotes, you do follow-ups, you close 50%. At 7 to 56 times 15, because you got to do, you got to send out 30 quotes. That's what's most important. That's $11,340 per day times 20 working days. That's $200 and $26,000 a month if and only if you send out 30 quotes a day at an average premium of $70 a month. Now, let's say that you take off November, December, like what I do. 226 times 10 is $2,268,000 a year in commissions. So is the goal to make 2,268,000? Gene? Yes. No. Alan? Is the <laughs> well, goal gonna, to make 2 I'm million? Gonna, I'm going to say no, no, because yeah. you just said no. <laughs> it's hell no. <laughs> okay. Your goal is not to make a million a year. Your goal is only one thing, actually two things. 30 quotes a day, and do your follow-ups. That's it. Forget about the money. Forget about how much the premium is going to be. Forget about how much you want, you want to make per year. The only thing I want you to count on is if you do 30 quotes a day, you can book it 
I can train my 18 year old to do this, you will sell 50% over the course of time. But you have to do 30 quotes a day and do follow ups. If you miss a day and you don't do 30 quotes, those numbers change big time. That's why people ask me, what's more important, the sale or the quotes? I tell them the quotes. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yes. So the goal is not $2 million a year income. That's kind of a side note, which is a beautiful thing. The goal is to send out 30 quotes a day and do follow-ups. That's it. If you concentrate on those two things, you'll make over a million dollars a year in commissions. Now, let's, let's go a little step further. For you PNC people that are watching this, or health people, or people that do anything other than life insurance except final expense because you are trying to close on the first call, huge mistake. If you send out 30 quotes of anything, per day, these numbers will work for you. I started doing this system with car insurance and homeowners. It works. 50% will buy. And I'm a monkey. My closing rate is 50%. I suck as a closer. But you know what? I can send out quotes for days. Anything? Do you ever follow up also with any annuity business? I don't, do way? Annuities. I don't do I hate annuities. Okay. Because that's paper apps. I can't do those. I gotta, everything I do has got to be over the phone or through a computer. I'm not gotcha. going to appointment. It ain't going to happen. Gotcha. I'm lazy. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> lazy? No, I, I've seen your numbers already and what, what you're doing. So my average premium is $58 a month, by the way. It ain't those crazy numbers. It's $58 a month. And then you get these big ones like the three million dude and his is 294, which brings my averages up, which is a beautiful thing. But it's it's not crazy numbers. I'm not doing, you know, a thousand a month premiums. I'm doing pretty small numbers. Yeah. Okay. Um, if either one of y'all have any questions for me, let me know. For anybody that's watching this video on YouTube, this will go out today. Today is February the 27th, 2020. Um, I keep saying this, subscribe to my videos because I post videos almost on a daily basis with different trainings that I'm doing. Because uh, you never know what I'm going to come up with. I mean, I did one about a month ago where I gave away a vacation to Cancun just for watching the video. If you missed that, I'm sorry. You, sc you got screwed. Hmm. All right. So that is it for me. Um, if y'all have any questions, call me 972-679-9029. That's my cell phone number. Okay. Th Alan, thank you. Gene, thank you. Thank you. Merry Thank Christmas. Thank you, Robert. All righty. Bye-bye now. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.